Hi there, this is Lana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. We are super glad you joined us today. It is a coffee break episode. This is where we grab our cups of coffee or tea or your beverage of choice and we discuss some of the questions that you guys have sent in to us. So if you have questions that you feel that we haven't yet covered or that you're dying to know about prayer or that you think just could spur on some really interesting discussion, please send that to us. The website is prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And today we're going to be talking about whether or not it is okay to pray from a list and whether we should be doing that. So I'm excited for this. It was a great question. And let's open with a word of prayer. God, thank you for this question and just for the opportunity to look into it and and to just enhance our prayer lives with praying from a list or not praying from a list, um, however it is that you want us to pray. God, we just ask that you would help us to open our minds to just be thinking outside the box and um, just pray that you give us wisdom to really address Martha's question in a way that's going to bless her and just help her to be encouraged in her prayer life. Amen. Amen. So Martha has sent in this question. And thank you, Martha. She says, is it okay to pray from a list? The Bible says, don't pray the repeating prayers like in Matthew 6. And then she says that she prays for the same friends and family every day and goes through the form of a list just because she doesn't want to forget something. And the verse she's talking about is when Jesus says, when you pray, don't keep repeating yourselves like the pagans because they think that God's going to hear them because they just keep saying the same thing over and over. So I totally get this question, Martha. It was something that I used to wonder about as well. And I'm really glad you sent it in because I'm sure you're not the only one who wants to know, is it okay to pray from a list? So Jamie, what are your thoughts? And the answer to the question do, do, of everything do, is do, no. Do. Um, my oh no, I hope we don't get in copyright trouble for me humming that. Do you think we need to cut that out? <laughs> we might, we might, <laughs> or maybe just, okay, everyone out there just don't. We are not affiliated with any game show. How about that's, that? I think we're that's good. That's correct. I think okay. that's correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when it comes to lists and when it comes to any kind of prayer in general, I think it goes back to what works for you. And what makes you grow closer to God. But I can totally see the, the question of the repetition being parallel to just praying names down a list every day and praying it every day, just like, God, if I just name these people, you know, I've got my list of prayers for the unsaved and you run through the list. Is that, you know, is that falling into that same category of repetitious prayer? And I think you have to go back to that scripture and when Jesus says, you know, they think that they will be heard because of their many words. And I think it's the heart that you're praying from, you know, that you kind of boils down to is when you're praying from a list, are you just running through it to get done with it? Do you believe that having that list has some, you know, like, like becoming superstitious about the list. Like, well, if I only pray this list faithfully, then of course God is going to answer. And if I don't pray this list today, then God's never going to hear my prayer. You know, I think if you tread into that kind of almost superstition or praying just for the repetition of it, then I would say, no, it's not okay. Um, or maybe it's not okay, but maybe it's not beneficial. So, you know, I think that it, I think that the question, is it okay? I don't think it's sinful, but is it beneficial? Good point. Yeah. 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 Almost exactly stole the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I literally stole the words out of your mouth. without. <laughs> so with that, thank you so much for your question. We'll see you guys next. No, I'm joking. Right. <laughs> no, I totally agree. And Jamie, I just, I had to laugh. She's so diplomatic. You know, like, well, I could see it being this way. I could also see it being this way. I will go ahead and tell you, like, I love praying from lists. I do feel like there are some pitfalls to avoid, which is when you get so mindless about it that you're not really engaging. I really like when Paul says, you know, I'm going to worship with my 
spirit, I'm also going to worship with my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like we should be fully engaged when we pray. Sometimes if you've been praying from the same list for 10 years and it feels pretty stale to you, like our brains are wired to get excited about new things and to tune out repetitive or old things. And so if you are praying from a list, you do want to make sure that you are engaging with your mind and not just kind of going on autopilot. Like when I was really little, like probably, you know, first grade or something, I had this list that I would pray to myself before bed and it was, you know, God bless daddy, God bless brother, God bless grandma, God bless, you know, and I would kind of just say God bless and then the person's name. Now, I don't think that's wrong to be honest. And I do feel like, especially from a kid, that there is power in giving blessing like that. But it also, once you've done it for a year, it's it pretty easy to totally tune out and to just be saying it. Like I, I sometimes have a hard time with the Lord's Prayer because sometimes if you've said it so many times, you can just say it, but with only, you know, like if I'm having a conversation with Janie about something that I'm excited about and we've never talked about before, or, or you know, like I need to be paying 100% attention to what we're talking about. I could say the Lord's Prayer with 5% attention, but I don't want that to be my default. Right. So yes, I love praying from lists and we can get into all the reasons I love praying from lists, but we do want to be careful that we're not just going on autopilot. I think that's the biggest thing to worry about. I, I would worry about that more than I would worry about the thing about being repetitious because I think the key there is he says, don't be like them because they think they're going to get heard because they're many words. And I don't think many people are praying from lists just because they think that it's the formula that's going to get heard. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that side of it, Martha, but I would just say, make sure that you're doing what you can to stay fully engaged while you pray from those lists. Right. And I think we should commend Martha for having a prayer list and for praying for those friends and family and those issues. I mean, that's, that's huge. And not everyone has that. So if you have a list that you've either, you know, felt like it's gone on autopilot, give yourself the grace of, wow, well, you know what? I have a list. I care mm -hmm. about prayer, you know, and, and launch into whatever works for you from that place of, you know what? I do. I have a passion for prayer and maybe I'm not feeling passionate about this list right now, but as I figure out what does work and, and maybe change things up to free up that, uh, I don't know, just kind of change things up to make it more interesting or uh, mm -hmm. not even more interesting, but to, to allow you to engage more fully with your mind and your heart and, and to connect with God, um, that at least you'll, at least you're coming from a place of not just being like, wow, I'm doing the wrong thing because something, I must be doing something wrong if I'm bored with my list. You mm -hmm. have a list, you care about prayer and God has planted that in you. And so move forward out of that place instead of frustration with yourself or, or pointing yeah. fingers at yourself. Yeah. Really well said. Um, I had this major breakthrough, which sounds really silly when I say it, but I had this major breakthrough as a mom when I realized just because something is good doesn't mean you need to do it every day. Because when my kids were littler and we were doing homeschool stuff, my thought was, okay, there are 20 things that are good for my kids for their education. So we need to do these 20 things every day. Like I'm talking like preschool, kindergarten, like we need to do handwriting. We need to do right. phonics. We need to do puzzles. We need to do fine motor skills. And we need to do all 20 of these things every single day. Mm -hmm. Like That's a little insane. <laughs> and so it was so freeing for me to realize, you know what? Yes, it's good to put on classical music and ask my kids what, you know, what movie would you picture if you were going to make a movie to the song? That's really cool. You don't have to do it every day, <laughs> you know, and right. that has translated to a lot of other things. Like I, I am totally embarrassed to admit this. Like I would even do this with diet type stuff. Like, okay, I know blueberries are good for me. So I, I really need to eat blueberries every day. I can't afford to eat blueberries every day. So I guess I, like I was so all or nothing. I was like, so I guess I should never have blueberries. <laughs> Like, no, I can totally see how that mindset comes into play. Yeah. I'm kind of like that too. It's, you know, with fitness or exercising, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not exercising enough. I'm like, well, what's the point? And I just stop altogether. Yeah. Eating right. If you're not able to eat right or whatever you deem is right. Every single yeah. minute. Yeah. 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 So I, I 
like I said, had this, it truly did feel like a breakthrough moment and, or a breakthrough realization. And it's translated into my prayer life because yeah, there I'm, I'm super glad I have a prayer list. And I talked about it before, like my, my prayer list for the unsaved that we started when we started doing um, the prayers for the unsaved, like started with five and all of a sudden I've got this list of like 20 or 30 and it just got so overwhelming. And I would look at it and be like, Oh, I'll, I'll do that later when I have more energy. (laughs) And so I needed to simplify. I really did, but I still have that longer list that I can go through every so often, just not every day. Um, I forget which Kennedy book it is, Jamie, but did you read the one where it describes Sandy's prayer box? I think so. It's like a Rolodex kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. the characters in my Kennedy Stern series is a pastor's wife and a real prayer warrior. And she's got this, um, like this index card holder with different files. And so there are some cards of things she prays for every day. And those would be, you know, like immediate family kinds of things. And then she has cards that she only prays for once a week. So maybe it's like today's Monday. So I'm going to pray for the president and the vice president and Congress or, you know, something like that. And then things she only prays for every month and it just kind of rotates through. I've never been um, like, you need to be, crazy, super organized to set something like that up. So I've actually never set one up like that, but you totally could, if that suits your personality, you know, these are things that I want to make sure I pray for at least once a week. These are things I want to make sure I pray for at least once a month, because otherwise you might just look at this prayer list and all of a sudden you have 300 things you want to pray for. It's really hard to commit to every single day, but you know, if you're praying for those once I'm going to, man, I just forced myself into a corner of doing math on the spot, but I think that's 30 things a day. You know, that feels a little more reasonable, or maybe you say five things a day and then I'll let you guys do the math. (laughs) Yeah. I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that it, it really is personal and it's, Mm -hmm. there's freedom. There's a lot of freedom in how you pray and what, draws you nearer to God and what allows you to really focus because I know, um, you know, just in general for me, I'm not a, an extremely organized person. Like the Rolodex would be overwhelming Uh to me, (laughs) but not writing anything down doesn't work for me either because it's just floating around in there. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you find what works and you can try different things to shift things up to allow you to, to find, whatever makes you connect with God and really connect spiritually with, with the things and people you're praying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot more um, lessons and videos and exercises about praying specifically from lists, as well as other things you can do with a prayer journal in our new prayer journaling course. And you can check that out at praying Christian women dot com slash journaling and martha if you're listening we would love to give you um since it was your question that kind of spurred on this really fun discussion we would love to give you a free ticket into that course so just send us an email or contact us through praying christian on our website and just remind us that we offered you a free um ticket into this course and if you're interested in the course, again, that site one more time is prayingchristianwomen.com slash journaling. And now I think it's time for our prayers for the unsaved, right? Yes. So yeah, let's, let's pray. God, thank you for the way you've used trials in the past to teach and strengthen my faith. I pray for my friend today for whatever trials they're going through. You know better than anyone what stresses, anxieties, fears, sorrows, and disappointments my friend is facing. Please reach out to my friend in this time, Lord. Use their circumstances to teach them how good you are. Teach them that you are a God of comfort and peace who can work out all things together for their good. I pray your blessings over my friend today, but I also ask that they wouldn't be so comfortable in life that they remain blind to how desperately they need your love and mercy. I long for the day when my friend publicly acknowledges you and surrenders their life to your perfect plan. Amen. 
Amen. And for anybody else who has questions for our Coffee Break episodes, you can submit those at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. Thanks again for joining us. And let's close in one more word of prayer. Lord, I'm thankful for this podcast, for our listeners. Thank you so much for the gift of prayer. We pray for Martha, and I just thank you for her dedication, and I pray that you would just be blessing her prayer life. We pray also for this prayer journaling course, that the students in there would feel so inspired and encouraged and built up in their faith. God, we're just so thankful for you and for your love and your grace thankful for our listeners and the chance to just meet together to talk about prayer. We just pray that you would be glorified in everything we do. Amen.